Hey everybody, thanks for listening to episode one of 10 Junk Miles. I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. The bad news is the sound on episode one is terrible because we had no idea what we were doing and it sucks. But the good news is the sound improves astronomically in the rest of the episodes. So if for some reason you just can't handle it, just skip to episode two. But I promise Content. you... Content. In episode one is pretty good. The scene is pretty awesome. The content's good. You might you might come back after you get hooked on the podcast later. We just wanted to drop this message in in case you thought the entire podcast was going to have this sound problem. So once again, thanks for listening. Bear with us. We'll get our shit together on episode two. We got it together. It's time to run 10 junk miles together. 10 junk miles. 10 junk miles. <laughs> junk miles. Welcome to the inaugural episode of 10 Junk Miles. I'm Scott Coomer with Corey Fain, Katerina Claiborne, and Aaron German. Um, just by way of introduction of what this podcast is and what it's all about, this was an idea that we came up with in terms of a running podcast by runners that is not necessarily about running, but more geared towards uh, introducing you to a bunch of people that you can take with you on your run and listen to their stories and listen to the issues that, that interest them as runners, rather than interviewing one famous runner or someone who's an author, just more of a feel good, have fun type podcast with respect to running. Uh, the, the format is going to be 10 10 minute segments that hopefully you're listening to while you're running right now. And if you need motive to go out and get your junk miles in or get your run in, our idea is that you'll take us with you and maybe we'll make you laugh and maybe we'll make you think and maybe we'll introduce you to something that you didn't know. Um, with me are my, my running friends, Katarina Claiborne. Aaron German and Corey Fain. Let, let me tell a little bit about um, myself and then we'll go, kind of go around and we'll talk a little bit about each person so that you can get to know all of us. Um, I'm a ultra runner who has a background in um, initially marathon running. Uh, the co-host Aaron is a um, running friend of mine. We actually discovered running together. I uh, ran with Fleet Feet for a while here in Chicago, uh, born and raised in Milwaukee, moved to Chicago, and uh, got into marathon running, ran a, a bunch of marathons, never very quickly and uh, never very well, but had a lot of fun. And uh, at some point I was introduced through a, a book by an author named Mishka Shubale to the concept of running a 50-mile race. And uh, I decided that I thought that's something that I could try to do. And uh, in the process, I met a whole bunch of really interesting people uh, in the sport of ultra running, although I do still dabble in the marathon on occasion and uh, kind of just developed into this trail running group and uh, got to know a lot of really cool people. Since then, I've run uh, a few marathons, uh, a bunch of 50 milers, 50 Ks, uh, two 100 mile finishes uh, with some other random assorted stupid things that we've all decided to do together, like running from Milwaukee to Chicago and Chicago to Milwaukee and all kinds of just like crazy things. But you're not above the 5K, Scotty. No, no. I did 5K yeah. a couple of years ago too. And hopefully I mean, we'll... but you got to wear a cotton t-shirt when you do that. That's your number one rule. Old school cotton yeah. t-shirt, Max Chaffage, yeah. uh, minimalist yeah. shoes. You know, a couple of years ago we got together and we had a, a 5K with all the people from yeah. our um, – from our ultra group and we had a really good time so Scotty, how many how many miles a week do you put in do you think on average i would say somewhere between not 30, a race week just 30 a week. is a light week 60 70 is a heavy week there you go. All right. so, and uh what do you do for a living did, did you have all this free time to be running i'm an attorney okay. and um i live, live in downtown chicago here of course i i know all this i'm just asking for the yeah people. well i mean it's good that the people get to know us you know <laughs> And, that, you know, we do more than just ultra running. So this is... What's your best finish in any race? Just so we get that out of the way. People want to they know that right away. Now, now, what do you mean by best? Are you talking about your fastest time or are you talking about the best race? Experience? Right. Like if I were to die, what performance would I want everyone to remember me by? Yeah, yeah. I would say the Superior Sawtooth 100 
um, by the skin of my teeth, 37 hours, 48 minutes. Right. And uh, I think that's probably the thing I'm most proud of, like the, like the time where I looked around and said, you know what, I did it. That's awesome because I was, I was there for that one. Yeah. Aaron, Aaron actually was my pacer for the final segment, and he had run the marathon. Of sawtooth. What was fun so. about that is that the last, as I knew the last twenty miles because I'd already run it, and I kept telling you we were close, and you need to do this for me. You got yeah. to finish this for me. <laughs> well, the, the great thing about it was that you know, and, and Aaron doesn't have a, a background in trail or ultra running, and Aaron is my best friend, so I got Aaron to come out and be my pacer at the Kettle Moraine one hundred for my second one hundred mile race, and Aaron, Aaron didn't really know what he was getting himself into, and um, so I went out to the Kettle Moraine, and and I just, I just completely flopped at, at mile like 80 I ended up dropping and Aaron didn't have he wasn't an experienced pacer he didn't know what I what he had to do he, basically what he did is a lot of telling me that I was going slow <laughs> and that this was easy for him and that he was probably gonna have to get his miles in later on during the weekend because <laughs> <laughs> so he kind of made his pacing experience about me about him a little bit yeah absolutely and then it was um, super boring it was like so, it wasn't fun. So they're walking most of the day. Yeah. Like, yeah. what are we doing here? So, then, like, mile 70 or 80, I remember um, I said to Aaron, I need you to go ahead and I need you to, to break down the math for me because I don't want to be wasting my time out here. I want to know if I have a shot of finishing. And when I got to the aid station at mile 70, and I'm all, you know, a million different ways of crazy, Aaron sat me down and he gave me this very complicated mathematical equation about how what I just did, I have to do an X amount of minutes and then I have to do this other part and why it was, and I just, in the middle of it, I said, this is too hard and I quit. And I think that, you know, we all felt bad about the fact that, that I dropped out. So Sawtooth was his redemption and I didn't even know he was going to be. The thing I feel pacing. most bad about is I never had to like watch you apply Vaseline before. I did, I did, a, I did a, a full, full body lube. In Not the on the top half either. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, all right, Aaron, Aaron became my pacer for Sawtooth at, at the last section. And he's the, he's the guy that kind of got me to the end. I ended up having two pacers and it was kind of redemption for all of us. Right. So I think that would be my, my crowning. Achievement. And I think that the other thing that I'm, that I'm proud of about myself in running is setting up an ultra group, uh, the Flatlanders, which has kind of grown into a huge group in the Chicagoland area. We started out with like four of us, and eventually now we have almost 600 people. So that would be it for me. And, uh, and you know, and, and this podcast was, was something that I came up with. It was one of my ideas that I know there's a lot of great ultra running podcasts and trail running and, and, and just running podcasts, but most of them seem to be focused on one thing. And what I wanted to do was kind of bring the funny and bring the lighthearted, bring the chit chat, you know, make it, make it something that maybe two or three episodes from now, you're going to look forward to lacing up and going for a 10 mile run with your friends and that we would be, you know, and then we have a guest that hopefully she'll become a friend at some point, but <laughs> <laughs> that's her laughing in the background. <laughs> that, 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 that then you would think of us as your running friends when you don't have any people to go run with. But um, we really want it to be more than just ultra and trail running too. We want it to also be, marathon runners and 5ks and just anybody that runs that you you know you lace up and you take us and you go on your 10 mile run we're gonna have 10 10 minute segments we're gonna hear you're gonna hear the the irritating garmin sound in between the segments which will indicate that we're switching to a new topic and it's like uh, we're doing 10 minute miles so you're gonna do 10 minute miles and for me yeah. that's how an ass yeah. for aaron that would yeah. be painfully slow I don't totally understand um, the title of our podcast, 10 Junk Miles. Well, it's it, the she, idea. She never, she never runs junk miles. They're, they're all quality. All, all your miles are quality? <laughs> I don't understand junk miles. Mm. Well, I don't. I well, really don't. Explain. It's, it's the one workout where you don't want to go, and you just got to go and get your miles in. And so you look at your phone, and you see that there's a new podcast that was released, and you say, you know what? Now I can go, and I can run with my friends, and I'll get my miles in. So... Junk, to me, junk miles is just miles that you're using to fill up you the, never, the training. You never run junk miles before? I do, but I, oh. I thought that that was a bad thing. I think we're turning junk miles into a positive here, and so, you know, that's good. Yeah. Katarina just cracked the code. <laughs> <laughs> we're taking it negative. We're <laughs> making it a positive <laughs> through podcasting. <laughs> yeah. So now I guess that's the first, the first mile. Yeah. Now we have to move to the next mile, which is about you guys. So, Katarina, 
tell us about yourself. Where are you from? Where'd you grow up? I've lived um, in the suburbs of Chicago most of my life and um, have been running most of my life in one way or another. Now, you were a coach, right? I was. um, I was a sprinter when I was young in high school and in college, and then I um, coached for many years. I coached high school girls in cross country and track and then went from hating long distance running to running 100 miles um what do you, what do you mean by home. hating it like you ran a short distance well i yeah i was a sprinter too much, or... yeah and then i was kind of forced to run cross country to stay in shape during the off season and really didn't like it at all um the suffering the <laughs> you know all the all the bad parts of it is what i remember um but you didn't just go from cross country to 100 miles either you were a marathoner for a while i i ran two marathons do and you then, have the Boston jacket? <laughs> I ran Boston. Um, what year? In 2013, the year of the bombing. That's when I ran it, too. But I did not buy the jacket, Aaron. Did you? Of course, it was the first thing I bought. I think Aaron has 12 jackets at home. I was freaked out. Do you have, do you have I was tights? freaked out. No, no. I was freaked out. Like, stepping off of the subway and just, like, being bombarded by thousands of people wearing the same clothes. It freaked me out. And, and it didn't seem... Like something I was gonna ever wear, so I didn't buy it. So how many marathons did you run altogether? Um, I've run four at this point, Um, three before I started ultra running. What's your PR uh, in the marathon? Yes, Um, three forty-three. Okay, just so we know. What about five k? Do you know your PR? Five k. I believe it's maybe like twenty-two ten. And you've run a hundred miles. And I've run a hundred miles. What's your PR for hundred miles? Three times. Um, That's very twenty-eight something. 28 hours and something. That sounds pretty slow. Yeah. Yeah, pretty <laughs> slow. Maybe someday I'll pick up the pace. Scotty, what's we'll your see. PR? Like 34 hours? <laughs> 30, 40, what is it? 30, 43. Yeah. Me, me and Katarina both ran the exact same time at the Potawatomi 100, one year apart. Yeah, it's a very special thing. That, were you guys together the whole so time? No, 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 no. Two years Not apart. At all. Yeah. So you didn't even know each other yet? No. Well, well I ran the 100 miler last year at Potawatomi. It was yeah. my first 100 miler. And when I finished, my time was 30 hours and 43 minutes. And then Scott goes, What? That was my time no last year. Is that crazy? Minute. You're as Pretty fast cool. as, a, as a young mother of three? Yes, Two. or she's as fast as, a, yeah. as an obese mm-hmm. middle-aged man. <laughs> <Just from sprinting. laughs> anyway, we have a special connection here. I, I, I'm curious why you hated long-distance running as a sprinter. Do you think you were just running too fast all the yeah, time? Yeah, I mean, were you, you were sp- trying to sprint? Yeah, I think like my legs time? always want to go faster than what my lungs will allow. I still right. have that problem today. So it feels comfortable to run fast, but I can't. The breathing just isn't there, um, so I slow down. So then you, after Boston, then that's when you became a long distance runner. Actually, um, before Boston, I had found, um, you know, a group that was running ultras and started meeting up with them at the Palos Forest Preserves. Scott was one of them. He was one of the first people that I met and um, was just so intrigued by the idea of running these long distances. Um, I kind of ran Boston as an afterthought because by then I knew what I really wanted to do, and that was to eventually you know, run a 50 miler and hopefully a hundred miler. Um, and you've also run Chicago to Milwaukee. I did. Or Milwaukee I to Chicago. ran Milwaukee to Chicago, um, the Turkey trot. I did that in, in, um, in November of this past year. It's not getting anybody confused. That's a race. That's not a race. That's something you guys made up. Yes. We just had fun. <laughs> um, we just had fun running from Milwaukee. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Fun. We didn't have that much fun. <laughs> yeah. This year, uh, just reading on the internet didn't sound that You guys put a credit card in your pocket and you started running, right? Right. Okay. Right. But th- it was like a bonk fest. Yeah, I think that's when I experienced my first true bonk. And you are a podium finisher multiple times. We give, what do you give On the international for? circuit. Well, first oh, of all, oh, you're right. international beer mile champion. <laughs> right. Yeah, so um, this past year I traveled to Leadville to watch the um, part of the Leadville 100, and I participated in the beer mile, which apparently I had a hidden talent. Um, I won the women's division in that race. Which is a good story that we'll have to (laughs) share at some point. Someday you can learn the details of that. But um, I guess my favorite part of my short ultra running career so far was um, last year I finished the Bear 100 in Utah. Kind of like Scott, just by the skin of my teeth I finished, but it was quite an experience to run in the mountains for the first time. And that's one of the hardest 100 mile races that there is. Well, it's a hard rock qualifier. Yeah, 
yeah. So, so, so <laughs> how many miles a week do you do you do in your training? Um, I probably run um, around usually around fifty miles a week. Uh, uh, what was your one race, the one great performance that stands out in your mind? Is your if there's one thing that you the bear probably. Oh yeah, definitely yeah. finishing the bear. Um, you know, I, I can feel the same. If if I think back to that race, I can feel the emotions as I was finishing up. Um, it was it was just an amazing experience um, of of being in such a beautiful place and having to push myself through such crazy circumstances. Um, so that was definitely the my highlight my of my, my career. Second thing, I'm also I'm always very interested in. You have like two kids. I do. A husband. Yeah. And a job. Yeah, I have a part time job. And you run like 50 miles a week. Yeah. I, I'm single. <laughs> I work from home. <laughs> uh, Get moving, Aaron. <laughs> I mean, I, I do like I, I probably do three hours a day working out, but like if I if, if like my brother visited me this weekend, I could barely find any time. So yeah, you know, I just squeeze things in. Uh, you know, for example, today I had a two-hour window, so I went out and I ran for two hours. Um, and just kind of make it work, and I don't, I don't do high mileage, in regards to ultra running. Mm -hmm. So um, does, does anybody in your family like, kind of complain sometimes because you prioritize the running over the? My kids probably do. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I just. How old are they? They're eight and five, so but they also like it. They so also you think you it's so cool. You can't put them in a stroller and push them. <laughs> no, yeah, Aaron, no, you, no, you no. had to be there at the at the Leadville Beer Mile when when Alex came up to her and said, "Mama, I've never been more proud of you in my whole life." Oh God. <laughs> I'm gonna cry just because I'm a I'm a 35 year old single male. I might cry because well, of let, that. Let, let's talk about you a little bit too. So tell us about you. We're not doing my from? segment yet. Yeah, we're doing your segment sure. right now. Where are you from? You. Uh, I'm from Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City, Kansas is. I you mean, say you say Missouri when you're from there. That's how you say it. It's oh, the Grand Union, I yeah, Missouri. New. Yeah, I I don't actually say it the way my but my father does. I respect his wishes. And what's your, and what's your running background? Uh, I guess I started running in like 2003 because I. Just, it stopped weightlifting, and I put a bunch of weight on. And I was in, I was like working nine hours a day, and I was terrible at it. But I thought if Scott, if Scotty said he ran a marathon, and what'd you weigh like in two thousand four, Scott? Two thousand three. Two sixty. Two seventy. Yeah, like a deuce and a half. Yeah. I'm like if Scott, I'm like if that guy can run a marathon. So the, and we live next door to each other. I'm like why can't <laughs> you're like why can't I run Wait. a marathon? I'm twenty three years old. Yeah. So it was. Did you guys meet at Fleet Feet or before that? Oh each other? no, we go way so back. You go okay. No, we we have a friend in common, and then him and my our mutual friend moved next door to me. Our friend in common was my old roommate from college. Right. And Scotty and him met on a chat website in 1992 yeah. about uh, philosophy. Okay. So that's way something? back. Not necessarily creepy, but <laughs> <laughs> in the right light, it could be considered creepy. Yeah. So then, um, so then you started running, and and you how many marathons have you done? Well. You and I would go running because it was a way to eat a bunch of food afterwards. That's true. And, we, and meet girls at, at races. Yeah, we run like – we actually – one time we even worked uh, a half marathon just for women. Yeah. We were like the guys that handed out the T-shirts and stuff. Right. And women Aaron, aren't Aaron into – very excited about number 69. <laughs> <laughs> I always wanted to get that – one year you got that number like randomly for some race, yeah. And how many marathons have you done? Uh, I don't know anymore. Probably over 15 but less than 25. What's your PR? Two fifty-two, fifty-seven. Wow. Dang. Yeah. So, so we're you're the fast guy of the podcast. I know, which is, but you know, you show up at these races and you look around, and every thirty-five-year-old single white guy is bald and looks like they don't do anything else, and they all look the same. What, what about five K? What's your fastest five K? Oh, eighteen something, eighteen twenty. It's and not, it's not that fast. And you've done some trail it's races too, fast. right? Too fast. I've done two trail races. One, of, both marathons. No, one was a fifty. The marathon was like a five-hour thing. Yeah, that was the Superior Sawtooth yeah. Marathon. And then uh, 50K was what's that? Was the Frozen Gnome? Oh yeah, Frozen yeah, Gnome. Yeah. Yeah. Came in fourth. Fourth place, you get absolutely nothing. Nice First choice. loser. Yeah, you get you get <laughs> literally. Oh, and you nothing. also have one of the fastest 50K times recorded last year. 74th, in yeah. 2013. But yeah. it, was, it was on the road. It was on the road. He did the Lakefront 50 50K. Yeah. What was your time for that? Three or 338. Like wow! Yeah. Just so you know, I've, I've won, I've run one, and only one marathon that's even near that time. Yeah, and it was yeah, it, it, the, the winner was like three twenty or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's now it sounds like you prefer the marathon distance to the ultra distances. How come? Uh, I, well, my hips hurt, my my body's getting beat up, and I don't necessarily love. It's it's hard to trail run 
around Chicago. I live right downtown. So, like, trail running is like a whole different kind of sport. To me, it's a whole different sport. You have to run on rocks and roots, and you fall, and it's not really a heart rate right. thing. It's so that, that was another mile. That's it. We don't even get to know Two miles now. in. <laughs> <laughs> Two segments. So Court and Corey was the next segment. And <laughs> this sucks that I can't sing. Like, You'll be in. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about Corey now. Let's get to know him a little bit. Corey, tell Do us it. about yourself. Well, I'm a runner for the last few years, like you guys. Um, uh, sometime three or four years ago, my wife called me fat, and I was like, "Nice, uh, I got to do something about this." That's still deep down in your psyche. <laughs> yeah, you can I hear that. Where, is there a picture of this, Corey? Fat? Uh, I'm sure this. I'm sure there's some pictures. Would you weigh? Uh, I don't know, two more than two hundred. So how tall are you? Five ten. It's not that bad. Well, whatever. I, I weigh two fifteen. <laughs> I'm five foot eight. I'm currently more than two hundred. Yeah. I'm five foot eight. Yeah, yeah. Are you calling Scotty fat? <laughs> I think, you, I think you just called the, me fat. I was trying to bring it up as lightly as possible yeah. through myself and. It shows up Where are you from originally? You didn't start off. I grew up in Crystal Lake in Illinois. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's 45 miles outside of the city. And we grew up in the middle of a cornfield. Um, back then, growing up, I had asthma, quote unquote asthma, making the air quotes. I don't know what that was, but I remember in junior high when we had to run the mile, I just got a doctor's note or something. And <laughs> Did your mom think you had it? And she, yeah, was, like yeah, pro- yeah. she was being protective yeah. of you. It's all, yeah, it's I, don't know all what, bullshit. I, I don't know what was going on. That's what I think now, for sure. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't until really my thirties that I got into running and like any hobby I've taken since then, I sort of take it to the extreme. So I ran a half marathon for fun. Uh, we did the monster dash in Chicago in 2010 and it was kind of like a fun Halloween thing. All of our birthdays are on Halloween. So like, Oh, this will be fun. We'll wear some costumes. And I was like, Oh, that was cool. What else can I do? Oh, there's marathons. We'll do a marathon. Oh, what else do people do? Read some books. And I was like, Oh wait, you can run 50 or hundred miles and just kind of started seeing if I could do that. So I did a half marathon and then a marathon six months later and then a 50 miler six months later and then a hundred miler six months later. And somewhere I went back to do a 50 K in the mix after doing a hundred miler, but I didn't really step my way up. I just kind of was like, let's just see if I can get this next thing done. Does your wife like your body now? Uh, (laughs) (laughs) I mean, when when you're like, I've run a hundred miles. Can you please, can you please look at me naked? Finally. (laughs) That didn't work out exactly okay. as I planned it to. <laughs> I, I just okay. wish we could see like a split screen before and after. Yeah. And I bet you it's like absolutely no difference. Yeah. Yeah. Corey, to me, is kind of like a hipster. Yeah. Am I right about what this? No. Yeah. No. Yes. No, He's wearing a, a, a mezzo, Mezzolana. Melanzana. Shirt, Melanzana from uh, Leadville. And Leadville, got a, made in Leadville. He's got a San Francisco uh, running company hat on. Huh. Yeah. He, he rolled in here with um, some, what is this, anti Well, it's a fancy beer. I, it's, it's fancy yeah. beer. We'll but he's kind of, to me, beer. hold on, hold uh, on. He's he's kind of cool without trying to be cool. That's how. Well, that's, that's not, that's, that's even better. That's not, that's not hipster. He's just oh. cool. It's, that's it's, not hipster. Okay, that's well, just, then you're just, just cool. cool. Yeah, yeah. And if you want to know Corey, it, the one thing that makes him stand out from everybody is he's always wearing this. This fucking tie dye weird. It's not a tie. What <laughs> it's a, imagination station something? <laughs> Does your wife? What, what is this? Did shirt? your wife pick that out for you? Or? I'll put yeah, a picture my, of this shirt. No, no, on no. The that Facebook one, page. that one was all me. Yeah, okay. we'll, we can, what we is can it put called? the shirt. The 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 shirt's like a picture of this guy who's drawing something on paper, and his head is like exploding, and there's birds and colors, and just kind of it's a cotton t-shirt. Thought yeah, thought yeah. coming and out of it. And you wear this for every race. Uh, it's my He's my quote unquote right. lucky trippy race shirt. No, it, it, what I, races have you worn it to that kind of made you believe it? What was the lucky? first time this shirt was unveiled? I didn't wear it at my first fifty miler, but I've worn it every time. So it's, it's not the same shirt. I have like five different versions of it. <laughs> <laughs> It's, but it's the same design. It's the same design. Because they make yes. a lot of different shirts. Did you get a discount yeah. on that? <laughs> I don't. I should get sponsored by them or yeah. something. Oh, we're, we're going to have a segment on that if I were sponsored. It, that would be it. That's your sponsor right that's there. That's my sponsor. Yeah, nice. Um, and, so and, and, the, 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 the pattern of the shirt is called study, and it just sort of looks like a, this kind of thing where, you know, if you just kind of, that's, that's kind of what I'm about. Like, you just think about things and, and understand how they work, and it's sort of, that's how my philosophy for running is just kind of like, go try it and really, like, explore what you're experiencing and see what you can do. Is this again. something you can do without any uh, pharmaceutical assistance? Or <laughs> sure. Or is this like a mushroom thing? All it takes is a t-shirt. Yeah. Is, is a sidebar, do you guys, do, do either one of you guys have like special outfits you wear for races or do you just, whatever's clean? I, you know what? I have one 5K shirt. It's the Terrapin 5K. 
that it, they didn't actually do the race, but it's got like a Grateful Dead yeah, feel. Yeah, I've seen you in okay. that shirt a lot. And I'm always wearing that to races, and, and it's like even uh, a friend of ours from our running group mocked me with it once, where she took a picture of herself with a 5K shirt on. Right. So that that's kind of that was always my go-to shirt, but lately I haven't been wearing it as much. Well, I have like every single piece of thing that I wear on a race day is like I know what that's going to be every Are single you time. Serious? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, the I shirt is because I think the shirt is cool, but like other than that, just like everything has like a functional purpose. And do you like, like lay it out the night before and everything? Like, I don't even need like to lay it out like the night before. Like, I don't have to pack for races. Like I just know. I don't even have to think about it. Like I just yeah. know what's going to be there. Just parenthetically, I have this shirt <laughs> upstairs in my room. Oh, I nice. have it. And I'm <laughs> waiting for the day where me and Corey can can get to the start line. At the bear, dude. Let's do it at the bear. Oh, maybe. Okay, I'll wear it at the bear. Side by side, but and I did buy a couple other shirts from them. Too, I want to be cool. twins too, or triplets. Let's do it. It'll be we'll, like we'll put the link on the page, and everybody can get the shirt. Liner. We can have a imaginary what is it? Imaginary foundation. All right. So what what races have you done? What what hundred miles have you done? Uh, let's see. I tried to do uh, like an easy starter hundred miler and a desert hundred miler or warm hundred miler, mountain hundred miler, and winter hundred miler. So the easy one was Umstead, North Carolina. That was my first one. Uh, then I DNF'd Leadville, and then I did Javelina. Since then, I've gone back into Leadville a couple times. Then I did Beast of Burden uh, in New York, which was just a long, flat, frozen nothingness. And I think that's it. I've finished 500s out of starting seven. I DNF'd Kettle in Wisconsin also. I was there for that. <laughs> yep, Five like out of seven sounds I... really good, though, yeah. <laughs> it yeah, seems Kettle good. was kind of where I met you in person for the first time, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Kettle's where I publicly shamed you. Yeah, for the first that was pretty good. So I roll into the aid station. <laughs> and I'm like, it's mile 40 or something. I'm like, you guys, I'm done. I can't. I'm not doing anymore. Like, my knees don't feel good. I, I, I think this is it. And he's like, oh, hey, everybody. This guy's knees don't feel good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm no. Like, I think, I think what right. I said is, Corey, you are barely fucking moving <laughs> down <laughs> a flat douche grade trail. No one has ever caused, quote unquote, permanent damage <laughs> doing that. Shut up and get back in the race. And then. I swear to God, like three minutes later on Facebook, there's a message or there's a, a post by him tagging me. It says, just got publicly shamed by Scott Coomer at the aid station. And I said, why don't you get off Facebook? And run? <laughs> but yeah, so this is and this is before it. Leadville, right? This was last. last I, I had finished Leadville oh. in a few hundreds before then. So I was doing in my mind. Leadville is like the ultimate. I, like that's the hardest one there is. Nah, hard rock is harder than that. Scotty runs. It's it's, it's Leadville is not the hardest, but no. but it's it's up. It's a good. Just, one, just the elevation know? alone seems like it's. Yeah, impossible. the elevation slows you down by a good thirty percent just starting off. What you was, know, your... What's the elevation at Bear in Utah? Was it like ten thousand feet? It got to ten thousand yeah. something. Yeah, I don't think Seven the elevation. 10. I didn't. I didn't feel the elevation there compared to when I was in Leadville. Um, but there was a lot of climbing. What do you guys? How do you guys train for that kind of shit here? There's in not really. I I mean, I've tried a few different things. I've tried the. Um, there's an Alta Lab, which reduces the, your oxygen intake, and I've tried the tent. And I feel like both of those things, I feel like the Alta Lab does not really do the same effect as having the difference in the oxygen concentration. I feel like that just like strengthens your what breathing it, muscles or something. Well, I, don't, I don't know what you're. So Alta Lab is like a, you breathe through this tube, which restricts your airflow, and then as you exhale, it has soda lime to absorb your, the carbon dioxide, so you can breathe less air, but you're not breathing in more carbon dioxide. I think it just doesn't cause the same adaptations as being. It's a way to try to get you to pre prepare for being at ten thousand feet. Yeah, yeah, but I don't, I don't, I think it's kind of made up. Like yeah. those elevation masks you see at the gym, like I don't, I don't think there's. Like How about like running up and down hills like that though? That's what kills me. Yeah, yeah well, running up and down hills is just you know I spend four hours running up and down the same hill at the yeah. sledding hill in town. Oh really? Yeah. So you're one. I've, I've never. I always think about doing that for I'm running Boston in a couple yeah. three weeks and that's what kills me is just the hill. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it just like it just like rips my thighs. One off. of these weeks I'm gonna host an event at, in Mount Prospect, which is just four hours in the bowl, which is just there's just up and down hill for four hours. Okay, and we're I can't all gonna hang that. out I together know, and do that. I wanna know what Corey's highlight of his running career is, but before he tells us, I just wanna tell you that one of the highlights of my running career as a spectator was seeing him finish Leadville finally because I had known that he hadn't finished yeah. and it was a real emotional moment. There's a great picture of them, you know. And, uh, I don't know if that. Yeah, that was I had his, a lot of friends and crew there that but year. But that, that was it. Was, was huge to be standing there and to see him walk across that finish line. So was that it? Was that, well, was he's it? getting a little. He's getting a little choked up right now. <laughs> Look at him. He's thinking about it. Um, I don't know what I. I don't know that I have a favorite event. I feel like every one of them has had like a deeply. I haven't had a race where I crossed the finish line and was like, eh, whatever. I don't care. Like every time it's been like in one way or another a deeply emotional experience. You know, Beast of Burden in New York was like just this flat, 
boring as hell course but i ha- it, it really gets into your head and you have to just kind of keep going through that and but what's the accomplishment know. that you're most proud of in your running life i don't think that i have a specific one i think i just uh, i don't know setting up the, the technology for the podcast <laughs> <laughs> yeah. almost getting the podcast tech running i mm-hmm. think is it all right well that brings us to the actual format of the podcast so we're now we're on mile three which is which is uh segment three which is the we're interview mile four, four yeah yeah we're on mile four which is the interview of our special guest so every week we're going to try to have a guest on the podcast who is an everyday runner and just get to know them usually funny people interesting people and uh so sometimes this week, really, we, sometimes they're like really done up with makeup and stuff. Yes, yes. Well, th- I and look this, good, baby. I look good. This, this week we don't we'll have post, anybody we'll post that some fits pictures those characteristics. <laughs> so we went out and got Racine. Can I be <laughs> the first person to cuss on the podcast? I said hell already. Said uh, hell. I mean, I think you, oh. you, you can you can drop the first f bomb. Fuck so, you, Coomer. <laughs> <laughs> So we have Racine Lambert today, and Racine's one of everybody's favorite people. She's one of the most upbeat, fun, uh, <laughs> happy people that you'll ever meet. She's had a few drinks because we were slow. I have one today. beer. <laughs> um, but Racine, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? Um, I'm from Denver, Colorado, and um, born and raised. Then I moved to San Diego, California. And then I moved here. <laughs> I don't know. Why? That's like the opposite <laughs> of the steps I was. I was working like. in nightclubs, and I came here to work for Walter Payton, and because he own, owned a bunch of nightclubs, and he wanted me to come Holy out and work. There's, there's, two, for nightclubs. there's two. There's two follow-up questions. There. One, <laughs> yeah. were you one of his girlfriends? No, I wasn't, but I knew a few. And, and two, were, were the what kind of nightclubs were these? Um, there was uh, one in in uh, Schaumburg called Thirty Fours, and then Studebaker's Pacific Club and America's Bar. Nice. And how'd you get into running? Um, well, I quit smoking in 1998, and then I started uh, with my newfound health, wanted to do something with it to help other people. So I started doing the Avon Walk for Breast Cancer. So I've been doing that for about 15 years. My husband and I have raised over $60,000 for wow. the cause. Wow. And we were, when we were out training, we would see people running. I'm like, how can they be running all this miles? And then I thought, well... Maybe we can. And then I remember one morning it was, um, who's the one that ran the Chicago Marathon and won the girl from England? I n- no, Paula not Radcliffe. Paula Radcliffe. So we're laying in bed watching her finish the Chicago Marathon, and I said I want to do that. So I signed us up the next day it opened, and then we just did that. You and Mike. Mike, yeah. I always make my husband Mike come with me. He's awesome. Now at the time that you signed up for that marathon, had you run any half marathons? No. Nope. nope. We just run. signed up and then we started doing 5Ks, half marathons up to the marathon mark when and we knew we were signed up. He was newly into running as well? Yeah, he ran a little bit in school, but not that much. And I've never ran. I never ran. I started running in 2003. So you went from non running to Non running to, to boom. S- to boom. Non smoker. Right. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, my hour. It's kind of hard to get up to go to a race when you're like getting home. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you ever meet Walter Payton? Uh, yeah, I worked for him. So yes, I did. <laughs> oh, you, you did get a celebrity on here. Oh, well, a celebrity ever celebrity. <laughs> and, and, and she was a, a Broncos fan. Not, I am a, a Broncos fan. fan. I am a Bears fan because you know honorary living here. But it's literally like the w- go Broncos. Most, like I have the nice two worst people here. I got a Green Bay Packer and a Kansas City guy. <laughs> <laughs> we, we like to give her a hard time. <laughs> yeah, he came in and threw my Broncos hat in the trash when I was volunteering at Frozen Gnome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so that did you run that marathon? Which the Chicago marathon? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, well, the story. Yes, of course I ran. And it. How'd you do? Uh, I finished. Yeah. Yeah. And then did you get the bug and go on? Or? I did. I we think I think I did uh, three or four. I once I get attached to something, then I just keep doing it. Like Jack Daniels? Pretty much. <laughs> I Sometimes I visit Jim Beam, but it's usually Jack. But I ran Chicago for three years, I think, and then uh, I heard about the Lakefront 50K, and so I said, well, it's only five more miles. So, so I what did year that. was that, roughly? I think 2008, maybe. Well, no, three, six, 2006. And then started doing that. How did you hear about the Lakefront 50K? I lo- I, I got Runner's World magazine. It was in there or something. Somebody had told me about it. So 
So that's just interesting to me because like I, I don't when I was running marathons, I, I ran like maybe fifteen marathons. I don't ever remember knowing that ultras happened. Like I remember at, at one point hearing a guy, there was a guy named Bach who lived around here and ran a fleet feed saying that he ran the fifty mile and I thought, fifty miles? Who who the hell does that? And he said, Oh, this is like a marathon and then another marathon. You know, yeah, so see, I didn't know anybody that had ran it or anything, and I just remember looking at it and saying, this looks like fun, and so I said, why not? It's just five more miles. It's just five well more now, miles. Okay, so a 50K, is, I have never run a 50K, actually. Um, a 50K is five more miles than a marathon, but what's the real difference? There isn't. Uh, to me, there wasn't, but I'm not a fast runner. There's a massive difference for me. I wanted to quit at mile 26. At mile <laughs> because, because you're basically doing, you're basically you're going out maybe five seconds. For me, it was like five seconds per mile, fat slower or something. But it, I mean, it. So it when you say it five seconds, you were doing it five seconds per mile slower. Yeah. So it like so it hurts. God, can you imagine having that kind of throttle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm just yeah. I mean, whatever. I. It it really hurts. It's just that's, that's the only way to describe it. But I can. I mean. By the way, for years I'd never ran faster than a four hour marathon. See, and I'm nowhere so near I, that, so yeah. I think I enjoyed it a lot more than he did. It's kind of a letdown for like, there's like one person out there cheering. Yeah, but you know what I found? <laughs> because for doing that many Chicago marathons, because we did it, I think we've done it eight times, and it was like so nice to be out there on the lakefront and no cowbells, yeah. no cheering. Because sometimes when you're, you know, like you're doing a marathon or whatever, by mile 24, you're like, shut the <laughs> fuck up. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so it was kind of a nice break when you ran this. It's like, ah, oh, silence. Did you do the, sp- uh, the spring one or the fall one? I did the fall one for every year for yeah. like five or six times. And then we did this spring run this last year was the first time. Nice. And the morning of, my husband and I were going to drive to 63rd Street Beach House but the spring one starts at Foster Avenue Beach, yep. so we would have been there by ourselves. This is all in Chicago. This, this is, is all Chicago in Chicago, lake. along the lakefront. And, and it's basically the, the place where most of us have run, or, or some right. of us run. And Flatlanders has a, um, they volunteer with a aid station. Right, well, the running group that, that me and Katarina founded, Flatlanders, we have a, an aid station on the, on the 50K, and, and we're going to have one at the, at the 50, the spring one as well. Good. I hope you have Jack Daniels there. Yeah, we'll have to have Jack Daniels <laughs> for him. What's your next race? Uh, the f- um, the Lakefront 50K. So you've run it a bunch of times. How do you approach this one? Do you have certain goals? This one's more of a training run because I'm training again for the Ice Age 50 miler. So I'm doing the Lakefront, and then the next weekend I'm doing Paleozoic and for training. And then That's I'm 250Ks. 250Ks. And then I did that last month. I did two 50Ks in a row just to get my mental and just to see if I can. So two weekends in a row, you're going to run 50K. Right. I did it last month, and I'm going to do it this month. And then the Ice Age 50 miles, is that your first 50 mile? No. I ran um, the Des Plaines 50 mile last year was my first 50. There's probably people listening to this that are marathon runners or 10K runners that hear you talk about 50 miles and think that you're some sort of a superwoman. Yeah, there's no, no. I'm out there a lot longer than most people, but... It's, uh, no, I think if you put your mind to it and you have the right attitude towards it, you can accomplish it. And like one of your favorite shirts is, it says, it's uh, a, I'm uh, the world's okayest runner. <laughs> 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 and I actually changed into that five miles before my finish of the 50 miler, just so I could run in that with my sparkle skirt. So. Well, and you said you have to work on your mental mindset. What, what is it that gets you through these long races in terms of, um, your mentality? I just don't want to quit. I just like sometimes, my dad was a Marine, and um, he was very strong-minded, and and my mom is too. And he would, every night after work, when I was growing up, he'd come home and walk two miles every night and come back, and then he'd want to take me with him. And I think, I don't know, because he's not with us anymore, but I kind of think he and another friend of mine who used to run with me died and I think that they're with me and I feel like if I don't finish then I'm letting them down too Hmm. so that helps me get keep it going do you think that you have to have like a special sort of circumstance to get you through these long races or is this something that you would say anyone can do no I think anybody can do it if if you want to do it and if it's something that you feel like you're um 
a goal that you have and if even like I've done races where I haven't finished but I I still feel good about it because I got out there and I tried it and it's like stuff that you guys always say you know you, you don't live unless you try you can't be great unless you start and I don't know I just I really like being out there plus I know if I finish then I get to have my Coors Light my Jack Daniels <laughs> Because if I don't finish, then I don't get it. <laughs> now, now Racine's going to stick around for we the just rest. Don't of get beer and whiskey. For, for yeah. <laughs> we're we're going to keep res the the guest, the, the the everyday runner, for the rest of the podcast, and they can chime in as much or as little as they want. But before we move on to the next um, segment, tell me the name of someone that you really think would be a good guest to have on this podcast. One person. One person. Yep. Um, John D'Agostino. Okay. And another one. Someone that you don't necessarily have access to, but someone that you would dream to have interviewed on this podcast. Anybody in the whole world. Anybody in the Doesn't whole world, live or dead? Or yes, I anybody. Because um, just to interview? Just to do this interview. <sighs> Gosh. Well, I don't on. know. So a runner? To anybody. Uh, anybody. Melissa well, McCarthy. I think she's hysterical. She's heavy, but I think that she could do it. Okay. And I think I you could think talk her heavy? I think she. <laughs> I think I could talk her into doing it. I think she's pretty cute. Let's get her. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> now we're moving no, on. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> she would be very interesting. She would be interesting. She's she funny. funny. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so That's how I'm gonna be remembered. <laughs> so for the next episode, we're gonna go into the yeah we're number segment. Five now. We're segment. Number segment. Uh, segment segment oh, sorry segment. episode Se okay, i don't right. even have the lingo down all right <laughs> you guys we, <laughs> we expecting someone professional um we're gonna we're gonna go into the, the the trunk and we're gonna get some junk from the trunk one one or two topics to discuss from the the people who have submitted on the facebook page okay um Where's Corey going? I don't know where he just oh, Corey just left. We are we are we recording? Are we are we recording? Oh, okay. <laughs> Corey went to pee. Corey went to pee. Corey's taking a pee break. All right. So I'm taking a random subject okay. out of the grab bag, uh, which we're going to call junk in the trunk, which is offensive on, on a number of levels. Yeah. And it and it Melissa McCarthy came, would not be happy with yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> not to make a Melissa McCarthy joke. <laughs> yeah, but she can move. Have you seen her move? <laughs> You would dreams. probably lick her. Let's oh. get, let's get, <laughs> sure. Let's get some video of that. <laughs> she probably smells good. That's for another day. Here's, here's the topic. Winter running, including wear, gear, methods, and nutrition, etc. So this is, I guess we're coming up at the end of the winter. Yep. But the question is, you know, what, what in particular do you do to make running in the winter better? And, and maybe I'll start by asking Aaron because Aaron is – uh, you know the the guy that is the everyday runner, not necessarily by by speed, but by distance. Yeah. You know, number one you... thing, Blake in Chicago is a man running out on the lake. You got to have something to protect your lower f th middle part, middle parts. Yeah. What? But hopefully <laughs> nothing that dead. shaves. Spe special package. <laughs> because the wind just rips into you, and it's. I mean, like if your finger gets cold, that's one thing. But if that gets cold, it it, it that really for, gets cold. It hurts for hours. <laughs> So it's so so painful. <laughs> so what do you use? The George you, Costanza you, uh, shrinkage. <laughs> the first time I went out there, and I didn't have that. I had to take a glove off and put a, jam a glove down there. No, Cor Corey's <laughs> Corey has returned from his from his bathroom break. We're talking about winter running. Um, Apropos clothing coming back with the and, toilet. And uh, Aaron's talking about the problem of the the cold special purpose. Yeah. So he's, he's in the winter getting, in Chicago with the wind. You got to protect that more than anything else. And I used to put a glove down there or something, but now like North Face makes like Kevlar fronted underwear you can wear, but that's still not enough. So I just take like a like a handkerchief and jam it down there. So just a regular handkerchief. Just like wrap it around. H have you ever used a hand warmer? Uh, no, that but you get, can. That might be too hot. Yeah, yeah. that might get a little you know too what? hot. You know, I haven't had children yet. I don't want to kill anything down there. All right. So. We're seeing? Number, what do you well, got? Number two is oh. hand warmers, though. Because you got the Ray Mounds disease. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's two people. You and Kat both have Ray Mounds disease. Ray Mounds? Yeah. <laughs> Self-diagnosed, of course. <laughs> no, no. Aaron went to a doctor. Yeah. You're, you're self I went to a doctor, like a 38-year-old pregnant woman, that said that her first thing she told me was that it was women have it. The, the rain ounce? The rain ounce, yeah. yeah. What is rain ounce? Uh, you're just like, you get bad circulation. Oh, cool. Well, I th yeah. yeah, Art has that. It's always needing a hand I want to chime in here about winter running. Um, as someone who really does not like the cold, um, it's just getting out the door. Um, 
forcing yourself out there and maybe suffering through the first five to seven minutes, which are going to be horrible, but you warm up and um, just getting it done. And once the warmer weather starts up, you, um, at least I, am just so happy that I spent my winter um, getting out there and, and getting my running in. You know, I Yeah, I, I kind of miss it. I like the winter running because... The first time I did it, I thought, oh, I'm not going to, you know, I used to train inside every winter. I didn't go out. And then I went out and did a uh, 50K and did it. And then I realized I could run outside. It wasn't that bad. So it, I think, like you said, just go out and do it. You know, me, me and Corey had Yeah, I think that was one of, the, one of my favorite runs this year so far was the week that it was the worst Negative forecast 25 of the year. I'm like, I'm going to run as yeah. much as I can this week. And me and right. Scott met up I one like day, and it was just insane. We were just, I like, mean, sitting at the office, and it was, like, 5 o'clock, and I was like, jeez, I'll go run. Anybody want to go run with me? And Corey's like, sure, I'll go run with you. And we, like, made, you know. I think I was wearing snow pants. Like, yeah, we, like, put together <laughs> clothes snow pants at the office. <laughs> based like, on what right. we had at the office. And, and I bet Other by the end, we, well, how far do we run? Like, 10 miles maybe? Yeah, 10-ish. And then at the end of the run, I remember getting on the subway, and I looked at him, and I said, you know, I, I'm I'm really comfortable now. Yeah. You know, this is perfect. Yeah, you warm up. I, I noticed once you get uh, less than negative 27 degrees, <laughs> you have to you have to wear, like, something over your eyes because your sweat will freeze your eyelashes together. But, like, negative 25, I'm good. Be negative, I don't know. My eyelashes are frozen shut yeah. and zero-ish. Ski goggles. That's yeah, yeah. We had goggles. huge uh, uh, ice beards, yeah. like snow beards on our face. I mean, the thing I find with running in the cold is – it's like it's like bonus endorphins because yeah. your body's trying to stay warm. Well, the one thing I'll tell you because I did two winter races this year. I did the Tuscobia 150 mile sled pull race, which I DNF, and I also did the Frozen Otter 100k race. You know, the one thing that you really realize is that in the cold you have to eat more food, and uh, like I noticed. That sounds like bullshit. No, 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 really. That was a like he said, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, eat food, it warms you up. I can see where you're coming from, but I can honestly tell you that if you go for an extended period of time in, in and I'm talking, it was minus 12 for like eight hours. And if you're out there in that cold for that long and you don't eat, you bonk 10 times worse and your, your fingertips start to get cold, your body starts to get cold. Katerina at the, at the um, turkey trot, she, she recognized that you need more food when you run in the cold too because we were – it was it was maybe like eight degrees, ten degrees, but we were outside for twenty four wow. hours straight running. So that that's one thing that that I noticed that you have to do differently. Any other gear? Or, I mean, I could pull. Well, if you're running, like um, if you're going to do trail running and stuff, make sure you have micro spikes or screw shoes so that you can you can run on ice, you can run on snow, um, and it you you get good traction with that. <laughs> it's this. I didn't buy them this year, and after reading everyone's posts, I finally am convinced to. But every time I've just been like, well, I mean, just sliding around and falling is part of what has to happen when That's you run. That's true, too. <laughs> yeah. But I've no, I'm excited to try out. The micro spikes run, are I amazing. Run. I, don't just slide. <laughs> yeah. I, I have done that for two years. I have poo pooed me the, too, the me spikes. Too. And I I'm, swear I'm to you, if now, we called my wife right now on my cell phone, you said to her, what's the best decision Scott ever made in his life? She's going to say the spikes. <laughs> That's how much that changed my and life. I think that's a lot of people that didn't want to run out in the winter because they're afraid of falling on ice or something. Yeah. But well, and, and when you wear those spikes, yeah. you could literally jump down a, a, a sheer icy wall and you're not moving. It's crazy. I ran that. What is it? The, next sponsor. The, the 50K. The, what was it? Frozen Noma. Frozen Noma didn't have any spikes. And that's the one where you have to slide on your butt down a thing. And Yep. And I was falling all over the place. I don't know where I was going with that. I'm sorry I went down that alley. I think you just, I think you just wanted us all to know that you slid on your butt in the yeah. snow. It really hurt. Yeah. And, and yeah, you so he actually peed on the freeway, too, that day. Did I? You were at a 10. You had to pull over. <laughs> that happens. <laughs> we, we had this rule that, like, you can't just say, I have to go to the bathroom. Yeah. You have to give it a number no matter what. So when we're running. Oh, so like 1 to 10? Yeah. So you don't just say, so I have to pee. If you're at a 10, you better stop the car. Well, uh, well usually it's on the trail. Right. Oh, I'm usually at a 10 when I'm using the bathroom on along the trail for the number two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I had the worst experience in Miwok last year. I have this routine that I follow, and I didn't this time. And I ended up waiting in the line at the porta potty for like, t it must have been at least 20 minutes. At the, at th so the first two or three miles of that race are just like straight up these switchbacks. And then I had to wait in line for like 20 oh minutes. Th yeah. Why did you just pee on a bush? Well, he had said number two. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> poop. I don't I mean. I, it was at a 10, and I, I had no choice but yeah. to wait for a one porta potty line. 
I think that's like a unique thing to runners and ultra runners is that we could spend an ungodly amount of time <laughs> talking. That's about like a whole segment. Exactly. That's, that's a whole show. That's yeah. not even just a segment. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> All right, any more winter clothing things? No. All right, we're, we're moving on to the next segment anyway. But I think we'll go Are one. Grab bags done. We'll go one more drag grab bag. All right, let's see. Random. Oh, it's winter gear. So I don't know if it's going to be really been there, done it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Somebody really wants to know about winter Scott just I'm, wants to talk I'm about how much winter gear he I'm has, I think. The elevation trail <laughs> trucker hat. <laughs> Why'd you write it down twice? <laughs> That's what I'd like to know. He just wants to talk about his setup. <laughs> Tell okay. us about your winter gear, Scott. Inspiring so moments during races. Someone someone submitted that. Right. So I think it's like, what was, the, what was a moment when you were really inspired in the middle of a race? One thing that I can think of is <laughs> <laughs> what happened. They're just laughing because I'm making some funny faces. <laughs> Corey's talking about his inspiration. Yeah, go ahead, Corey. Uh, I mean, this isn't like a, a huge personal one. I just sometimes when I see people's kids at races, that makes me really feel like, oh, that's a cool thing that there's some kids out there. You know, it'd be like randomly at like mile 35 of a 50 mile or something. Like, how did they even find their way out here? Like, what kids have the patience to like stand around in the woods and cheer for two hours? I've never seen Corey's right. kids at a race. Yeah, ever. you won't. <laughs> I've seen Cat's kids at a race. Well, for me, um, I have this memory during the Bear 100 where I was panicking a little bit about not making the cutoff. You had to finish that race in uh, 36 hours. And so I was trying to do all these calculations in my head to see if I'd finish. And I, I was running with this man, um, you know, just someone I met on the trail. And I was asking him, okay, are we going to make it? Are we going to make it? Uh, how about this time? How about that time? And he just looked at me and said, You're, you need to just um, forget about that and enjoy the process. Enjoy the trail, enjoy the run. And um, I put all those thoughts about the time and if I was going to make it into the back of my head, which I did pull out later, but um, I just tried to sort of be in the moment and enjoy this beautiful place. And I, I really thank this man for saying those words. Because Do we know who the man is? No, I have no N idea who the school. man is. <laughs> but he's... <laughs> there actually was no man. <laughs> but it really, was it, it really is something that I. Yeah. Yeah, was it really guy? a man? It was a real man. What mile were you on? <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it was probably like mile sixty. Okay, and so that, that could have been real. Could have been real. It was real. Yeah. And if you would have said I eighty, I'd question yeah, that. Yeah, the, <laughs> the validity of that. Anyway, I, I think about that because um, I am doing this in order to enjoy being out there and enjoy the trails and and I use that as a reminder from this random man. <laughs> I had no, one sorry. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. I had one when um I was doing the North Face um 50k last year and I was real nervous cuz it was one of my first like Kettle Moraine hard trail that to me that's a hard trail race. So I get to this one aid station I ask how long have how long, you know, what mile am I at? And they said 11, and I should have been at like 16 to 17. So I got very down, very depressed, and I love Neil Diamond. So I always listen to Neil Diamond. Oh my God, we found a common ground. I know. <laughs> so that's like my song to go to. I don't it's listen the to first music while I run. 10 Junk Miles Love Connection yes. right there. Aaron just looked at her so like, like. I get to this one part of the road, and here comes my husband, who is amazing, driving the car and out of the huge loudspeakers, got Cracklin' Rosie going oh down the street. Awesome. Oh my God. He's got the map, God, and I said, awesome. I'm not going to make it. I'm only at mile 11. I should be at 16. He goes, no, you're at 18. They don't know what they're talking about because it was the stop for the marathon. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. The, they told me wrong, and I just started going, oh, my God. It, that was just the best. So somebody actually lied to you. They did. Right. It was an inspirational well, moment. Well, they thought I was running. They were, thought I was running. <laughs> <laughs> the inspiration part is the Neil Diamond. lied to you at a race. <laughs> but it was yeah, that was kind of hard, though. It's like I wonder how many other people that lady told. That, well, like, let me ask maybe you this. Every time you hear Cat Cracklin' Rosie, do you remember that moment? Now? I do. I do. It's and we mean. listen to it. I listen because I don't listen to music or anything when I'm running. So I listen to it on the way to races. So it's in my head because it's very catchy. So on the way to going. every race, you're I blasting Neil, Neil Diamond. Diamond. Exactly. <laughs> Aaron's immediately going to ask for a ride. He's going <laughs> yeah. to everything. You, you have to understand, I, I went to his, his house in Kansas City, stayed with him. And 
at like eight or nine in the morning. I come Neil Diamond house, poster his, in the bedroom. His his dad. I mean, he, all he does is make meat. He sends me cases of meat for holidays and things. <laughs> but his, they got the Neil Diamond cranking in the living room, yeah. and it was just like vinyl. It's a way of life yeah. in the German family. Yep. Love and, on the and, rocks. And I, grew, yep. I grew went, up to it. I we saw up. Neil Diamond, and, and I swear too. to you, a woman in a wheelchair stood. <laughs> In the middle of See? the America song, he's Jesus. Today. Now, to be fair, she was in a wheelchair. She was an obese wheelchair. Yes, she was like rascal fat, like rascal fat. Uh, yeah. Not not like wow. she didn't need the rascal. That actually brings me to my most inspirational moment, to be honest. Uh, this was like 2004, 2005, back when I was 24, 25 years old, 200 pounds or so, being passed by. A, I think that marathon in Chicago was passed by a blind woman on a leash. They can't. They can't see. <laughs> passed by a one-legged person, <laughs> and then finally passed by a guy in a cow suit. <laughs> oh, the cow suit. <laughs> That's guy. the worst thing, you know. I mean, it's one thing if old people pass you, but to be passed by the guy in the and cow that suit. inspired you to, to do what? <sighs> I guess Wear it was a five more years. <laughs> <laughs> it, it sounds more like a kick in the crotch. That's when I bought a cow suit. <laughs> you make a very good point, Scotty. But was that the, was that like something that inspired you to be faster at the marathon? Years later, it did. Because that's depressing. How, how many years later did it take? <laughs> like five or six more years. Yeah, definitely. Now, that reminds me of uh, <laughs> at the beginning of Leadville. Like and bad stories, don't I? At the beginning of Leadville in 2013, I remember hearing like, okay, there's some potholes up to the left. You're gonna, there's a group of people. You're going to want to go around to the right. And then we saw this guy coming past us, and he was wearing this vest that said visually impaired runner. I'm like, wow, that's ambitious. And as we came up 6th Street on the way back in, there was that same guy, and he was – had a different pacer at the time and still had his visually impaired runner vest on. And I mean, there's some crazy sections of that oh, course man. where you're like hopping from boulder to boulder. And I don't know to what extent visually, I don't know what visually impaired means, but that is fucking badass. I mean, cause is. like legally blind, that, that's not the same thing as totally blind, right? I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe you could see uh, shadows or. I mean, but whatever still, the case, it's way, hard enough with, like, full good normal ring, yeah, eyesight. I mean, I mean, you DNF'd as a, as a full-blown <laughs> yeah. visual I person. have fine but eyesight, and I DNF'd. I yeah. mean, that is some impressive I, shit. I think for me, one of the things that inspires me, and I don't want to get choked up and emotional, is I always think about, you know, it started the, the first time I had a friend, uh, Aaron knows him, named Eaton, who had a compartment syndrome. And for a while, we thought, like, he was going to lose his leg or he was never going to run again. And for a long mm. time, I thought about him. Like whenever I was running and things were getting hard, I always think, you know, he would give anything to be able to be in this race right now. And that kind of brought me back. And now it's our friend Alfredo who's been diagnosed with ALS that, you know, like he didn't know when his last race was. He didn't know when his last run was. You know, he, he might not ever get to run again, you know, and, and that we don't know. You know, so a lot of times when I'm when I need inspiration or I need to inspire myself, you know, I think about that and just think about the fact that um, – one of my heroes, Jimmy Dean Freeman, he always says to remember that this is uh, something that we're inflicting on ourselves for sport, you know, that we're we're out there and we should be grateful that we're able to do this, not thinking, you know, woe is me and this sucks and I'm tired and things like that. So, you know, I, I keep a little picture of him with me in my in my fanny pack or in my I have him attached to the sled and I you know take that with me wherever I go. So that's a good reminder to me. Inspirational moments. That's it. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring everybody down. Maybe we all need yeah, to do a to shot and like yeah. m move forward into you know into the next. But I mean, definitely when you're out running and you're in the middle of a race or out, in the, it's 5 a.m. on a Tuesday and you're by yourself. It's 25 deg under zero degrees outside and it's like you're on the moon. You need to find something, don't you? Yeah. It's excruciating. Well, and I mean, I think in the beginning it, it was. Uh, you know, you, maybe you want to lose weight. Maybe you want to finish a marathon. Maybe you want to raise money for a charity or something like that. And, and, and those were the easy runs. But, you know, it's like that, that kind of goes back to the reason why we wanted to have the podcast. It's it's the I'm in I'm in OK shape. My training's fine. The race isn't for a while yet. I really don't have any good reason to inspire myself to get off the couch. You know, that's that's the hardest day, you know, and especially if the weather's crappy and so on and so forth. I think for, I think for me, recent inspiration is I'm just trying to see what the what I could possibly do. I, I feel like I feel like there's a certain window you have. Apparently not. I thought when you got married and have kids, then you can't run anymore. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it was over. But maybe that's not true. For me, it's just registering for the next race to get myself going. Like then now I have a new goal, mm -hmm. and it's not like okay, you know, I don't have anything to do. I have to train for this. So has there ever been a point where you not registered for a race? 
where you don't have an extra race. I think I've always yeah, I, yeah. I think I've always I, I used to do that, race. but I don't do that anymore because I, every time I try, like, oh, I have a month off, and then something pops up. Oh, I'd like to do that. With ultra running, you have all these cool races and all these places to go. That you know, and I mean, Corey always has an extra race, but people need to understand. <laughs> Co- Corey registers for like fifty <laughs> races a year. <laughs> and he shows up for like ten. He's <laughs> the king of the DNS. No longer. <laughs> Oh, you didn't hit the button? I can say whatever. I okay, hit the button. button. <laughs> for, uh, that's from my sister's karaoke machine. <laughs> She's like 13 years younger than me, and we got it for her when she was a teenager. Only you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the, the next segment I have listed is, it's called If I Was Sponsored. And the idea is, who would be your dream sponsor and why? And, and it could be both running and n- non-running. What? It's kind of like gassy over here. <laughs> 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 that being picked up on the mic. That's because that's because there was a lot of pizza and a lot of uh, <laughs> beverage, adult beverages leading up to this. The um, technology setup took a little bit longer than we thought because this is the first time. So, it, it, but it's going to get better. We're recording right now. Yeah. Are, are you okay though? Can we move forward? <sighs> so I guess for Aaron, gas X is the first one. <laughs> 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 if I was sponsored. He's, trying, trying, he's doing an <laughs> ultrasound with the microphone. Aaron? I'm trying to think of what I would be your dream. I, I know right now mine would be that Arteryx. You know? I mean, I've been buying every single thing that they make, and although it's really, really expensive, every single thing is high quality. I've been buying jackets and, and all kinds of other things. And then I also discovered the um, outlet mall on the Illinois-Wisconsin border. It's a Solomon Arteryx. Have you been there? Yes. Is and is there stuff on sale or is it? Yeah, it's everything from last season at half price. Wait, Who are they cares? the same company? Yeah. Solomon and Arctic. I don't know. They might be owned by the same company. Interesting. But that if sponsored by them, you should know that. <laughs> yeah. Well, if I was sponsored by he them, would. I'd probably find out about <laughs> it, right? Now, but, you you love Arcteryx because you've gotten really into these winter races. Can yeah. you can you wear stuff from Arcteryx for other oh, seasons? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I just bought running shorts by them. They have running shirts. They have um, all kinds of summer stuff, too. But, you know, I discovered them through that. That I just bought their shorts, the running shorts, and, and they're really cool. I showed them to Racine before the uh, podcast. Like the He's shown me the shorts four times. Well, you know, I only got one. Do you remember the old race ready shorts that had that like mesh along the whole back that you could it's, it has that concept. In. So you could put something really big back there too, so that would be my like my functional dream sponsor would be that. Um, I don't know who my non-running sponsor would be. Maybe something food related. Maybe Burger, Burger King. King. Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> Burger King. Well, for you, it's Starbucks. Totally. The, Aaron has discovered the latte at the age of thirty-four. Thirty-four. Yeah. He, he's been no caffeine his whole life, yeah. basically. I'm the same way. I uh, yeah. and cat last too. year caffeine. Cat no doesn't. Caffeine. She doesn't do caffeine. She's got two kids. She still doesn't do caffeine. I've eat, drank one cup of coffee in my entire life. What about and I'm caffeinated 42. gels? Yeah. What about during a race? It seems like overnight. You um. Get a real, like, yeah, yeah. Sometimes overnight I'll drink a Coke, but on a daily basis, no. <laughs> um. Aaron, before the podcast, Aaron was trying to convince me that I need to try latte. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll change. Uh, um, Aaron's been different Starbucks. since he discovered the latte. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'll have to. I'll have to try this. We'll see. We'll see what happens. No more afternoon naps. Well, <laughs> so during an ultra, you don't drink caffeine. Um, maybe I'll have a few sips of Coke if they have them. By the time I get to the aid station, sometimes there's not much left. Um, but yeah, I'll drink some Coke at the aid stations, but not normally on an everyday basis. So who would be your sponsor? Um, well, I guess I would take um, a shoe sponsor. Would be great. Um, I. I mostly wear Which Hoka's, okay. mostly Hoka's, but you know I could probably I could probably work with any shoe type so, if they so were giving like, me free ones. So if like Mr. New Balance showed up tomorrow and said, "Hey, we want to sponsor you," you'd have no problem pitching all your shoes and just going all New Balance. I would try it. Sure, why not? Um, maybe I don't know United or Southwest Airlines would be a good sponsor. Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> uh, you know that's the problem. There's all these races that I'd love to do out west, and um, you know. You have to pay for airline tickets, so. Yep. Do you know how much faster you'd be if you did caffeine? <laughs> I'm serious. No, because I get caffeine. <laughs> but I mean, because you have like no tolerance built up. 
Oh, right. Well, I know they do say that, that if you don't do caffeine, then you're in the race and you try it. It's going to have a better effect than for most people. So, Like in a marathon, I'll do like seven bags. With the caffeine in like them? 25, 50 milligrams, yeah. Mm. Like I'm cheating. <laughs> it feels like because you take one of those and you're just instantly awake and you're faster and you feel good and you get another half an hour. with. But now has that changed since you've become a latte addict? I haven't noticed my... Corey's, Corey's laughing. I, I'm totally serious. Yeah. He, he did not drink any coffee, caffeine, anything. Yeah. And now he's like two or three lattes a day. Lattes oh. become like, like a part of his life. I, I think it's the milk, though, maybe. Uh, but, yeah, we got kind of off the, the thing with the with the, the well, yours is Starbucks. Yeah. So. Starbucks? What about what about an athletic? Probably company? like the North Face because that's oh, such a, you know, nobody God. like nobody really knows that company very well in Chicago. Aaron, Aaron <laughs> is as bad at the North Face as I am with the Arcteryx. Yeah. He'll be wearing the hat, the shirt, the the jacket, the pants, Scotty's the shoes. Scotty called me out when, when we head out for a I trip because I got a backpack and a coat and a thing, and he's like, you, you have too much on. I like the North Face a lot, too. Yeah. North Face is good. I, ju I just sent them back a pair of running shorts that I, I must have washed, you know, like, with the worst detergent you can and threw them in the dryer on high, and I was like, these things fell apart. And then they sent me a new... They sent me a gift card for oh. her. You know what else would be a good sponsor for Corey? Would be Leadville. <laughs> yeah. They really should sponsor me. I have they never met even, anyone that loves let me Leadville in as much as him. Smart, I don't, I smart don't, will too, though. I'm, I'm breaking up with him. They didn't let me in this year. <laughs> yeah, well, he's, he's going to do the Colorado 200 instead. So. What yeah. changed about Leadville? Why, why didn't you get in this year? Oh, they had a lo they lottery. They switched to a lottery this year, yep. Everybody's doing lotteries lately. So how many years in a row have you gone to Leadville? Well, I did three years in a row and I didn't finish the first one and then did the next two and then I was like after I did two and kind of had a good feel for it I was like I I'm going to do one of these 10 year things I want to just come here every 10 years I've met a lot of people in this place over the last few years like it's going to be my jam and then so then they never gave any compensation to people like who did it previously if you were if you had done it nine times and you were going on 10 oh, you could get in the 10th one oh. <laughs> yeah which is like three people. Okay, that's, <laughs> that's cool <laughs> so that they were nice to those guys, but or ladies, but you know. How many? How many people got selected to run? I don't know. They don't, it's like a they don't disclose. Two billion anything. dollar company. They don't. Like, oh, we don't know the details. Like that. Yeah. I mean, I know in our running group there were maybe six or seven people that applied, and maybe three maybe people got ten. in. Yeah. Three people? I thought just three. No, it was Shelly Cook, Ethan, and um, Rachel. So who are? Oh, you Rachel got in. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Who do you want your sponsors to be, Corey? Let's see. Running sponsor. I mean, I guess North Face would be good, but mm -hmm. I like the Ultra shoes. Uh, Non-running, probably the Fresh Baked Dispensary in uh, Boulder. That, that's ad adult beverages or adult foods? <laughs> adult uh, edible thing. <laughs> Pastries. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Special cookies. Yeah. Yes. Racine? Um, well, Daniels. not none running is Jack easy, Daniels. Jack Daniels. But I think Hoka, Hoka, I can never say it, and I want him to be my sponsor. Yeah, can I, who, who here can pronounce Hoka. the whole the whole brand name oh. properly? Hoka One One. Wow, Hoka okay. One One. You See, if somebody says it Kat. first, then I can yeah. get it. <laughs> and I also think Flatlander should, too, because I always buy more <laughs> items from them She's than the anybody the else. <laughs> Every order, I, so I that would be a good up. sponsor. Like where we should do a little plug. <laughs> I always screw up something stuff. from Racine, but it's just like the law of averages because she orders like order ten <laughs> things. <laughs> the last order, I had to reorder like. But it's uh, cheap, st cheap stuff. Cheap price. Good, That's nice. Good Thanks. Stuff. Thanks, Racine. <laughs> cheap I, I pride price. Myself on going out to find cheap the cheapest stuff. Price. Available. Good quality. Speaking of shoes, I'm, I'm curious because I, I go through a lot of shoes. How many pairs of shoes do you guys go through, like, in a year, do you think? Oh, God. Well, what's weird is my shoe thing just, like, keeps expanding, and then I never really, like, Mine wear too. out any of them. Yeah. I just sort of, like, I just now started like that this last year. I've got a whole thing yeah. of shoes. What do you guys do with all your old shoes? You just, you just They're just still there. Them. Sometimes I rotate you them in again. Or yeah. Yeah. And the then a lot of my older pairs, I'll do the screw shoes in those for the winter. Am I the only person that has trouble letting go of a pair of shoes? No, no, I have a closet full of them. But like I can't throw them away. For some reason, I keep thinking I'll get I'll put laces in them. I'll use them for walking the dog. There's charities like, for that. Well, I'm too, a lot you know? better because I think that you know homeless people could use them. Yeah. I mean, I'm better than you. Is what I'm trying to say. Because you're like you think you can walk the dog, and I'm thinking about giving them to somebody. But I never do. They're just stacked up in my house. I think it, I think for me it's just that I bought this thing. It was kind of expensive, and I have all these memories with it. And I just feel it's just hard to let it go. I know this is how hoarding starts. Yeah. But <laughs> did you see there's people it's a, that will, it's be a will uh, go like, you know, for baby shoes, they cast the shoes. They'll do that with your running shoes. Of course. What, what are you talking about? 
bronzed. Um, the bronze. You the like bronze. A, a your bronze shoes. Hoka so right you here. could have your shoes sitting there, bronze. <laughs> my <laughs> my <laughs> old shoe. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, both but shoes. What the hell am I doing that? And, and then you could you sit there and put that my first fifty miler, my first hundred yeah, miler, the and they're bronze and they're for, they're forever. This, this is this goes into like a whole different. They'll scene. be next to your dead cat paw and print. Running people will pay for anything. They do these these. Half look marathon, it up. Half marathon people pay for anything. Oh, come on now. Don't, don't look no. down your nose. I'm going to run a half oh. marathon next month. So. I'm running that too. I'm talking about people that, just, like, if the, for instance, we went, Scotty and I did the Las Vegas marathon a couple, three months Talk ago. Talk about. And all the half marathon people money. there, they'll buy anything. Yeah, there was a lot of consumer products yeah. at the half marathon. All right, well, that's it for if I was sponsored. <laughs> what are you in a hurry? I'm worried about Katrina. <laughs> All right. Worry about getting home myself. Next favorite race discussion. Maybe what running home. was your favorite race? The, 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 it doesn't have to be your best performance. It doesn't have to be, you know, just whatever race in your past that you look at and you say, this was my favorite race that I ever ran. Aaron. Whew. It's got to be Boston. Milwaukee. Oh. Milwaukee. Mar- was it Milwaukee? Yeah, the Milwaukee yeah. Marathon. Yeah, yeah. A year before, I had run a marathon in New York, and I, my, I think my time was four hours and 45 minutes. This was 2011, and I just, that was the marathon I decided I needed to either stop running or lose weight. So the Milwaukee Marathon was one year later, exactly, and I ran a 302. So that was oh. where you qualify for Boston? I qualify for, for Boston. I think, I think at one point in my life, Scotty said that he would – you said I would, never, I would never be able to qualify for Boston or something. No, I never said that. Well, you said something like it's impossible. Like even that year, like halfway through the year, you thought it was it was maybe impossible it, for me. Yeah, it, it, there were points where I, in my mind, my inspiration was you, was you not. Uh, there's no way I can do this, and it just happened that time. Wait, so that that's the one that was the best race that you ever had. The best race I've ever had. So, I think I was I was kind of high at the end. It was like tingling. Did you have some of Corey's treats? Yeah, like first base. Like you just feel so like everything feels so good that you're like the world slowed down and you just feel re- you feel really fast. I, mean, I think I speak on behalf of everyone from Milwaukee when I say that just being in Milwaukee makes everyone feel that. Wait way. a second, I, I, I need Milwaukee. to know something. You felt good like in the last five miles of the marathon. I've never felt that feeling. Maybe you're not trained well enough. Oh. Maybe you need caffeine. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Maybe you need a latte. Uh, my old I think I think Chicago last year I, f- I felt really good too. Just like just high, just like I I mean it's like it's, it's legitimately that that runner's high and an insp- and like just. I'm I'm gonna side with Aaron on this too because yeah. I'm gonna say in that in that Kenosha marathon that we did last fall, that was my fastest marathon. Were you ever guys ran. all PR'd? Yeah. Right? I I felt really good in the last five miles. Not only because I felt like I was, you know, feeling good physically, but then also for being well trained, just passing people. Yeah, you're just in the last five people. miles because you're seeing people just dying on the side of the road, and then here comes the big guy. You know, Pat. Nobody likes to get passed. That by Chicago me. marathon, I passed the like the chick who was in the Chicago magazine. Like she was like featured as like the top w- woman. I, I feel really good about passing women. And that's, that kicked you? That's probably deep down something wrong with me. Yeah, we're gonna, <laughs> we might have to have a psychology yeah. segment. Like you like shouldn't feel that out. That's a Psycho whole other podcast. Like, <laughs> I beat the top girl? Am I in the top three women? Like, there's, there's something wrong Well, with you that. can't tell me that there aren't, like, some elite or sub-elite men that that's their whole standard is I want to beat every woman yeah, in the yeah, race. Yeah, the guys that are, like, the two there are? guys. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think that's, that's unique. not something I've ever thought of. But there probably are for 100 milers, too. Guys that, you know, they, they just want to make sure that the, they don't have a woman beat them. I am always in the back, so women always beat me at everything. <laughs> okay, Racine, favorite race ever? My favorite race ever probably um, has to be the very first Chicago Marathon I ran because I ch- that's the one I trained for the hardest. I looked to the most. I was most nervous about, and I did it. And so I, I, that's, I'll still have that feeling of crossing the finish line and breaking into tears and just saying, I did a marathon. Was you your know, husband with was, you at the finish line? He actually beat me. That was the bad part of the race. Is well, he didn't want to get beat by a girl. Well, no, because we, we had the same pace pretty much. Or Actually, I was faster than him at that point, but the five-mile mark, you know, where you can stop and use the facility or whatever by Lincoln Park, well, we thought we would – he thought I waited, and I thought he waited. He took off to try to catch me, and mm-hmm. I was still behind him, so whatever. But it, that just that was just um, – a really good feeling being it, knowing that I could run that. 
I mean, that was, you know, you say favorite or whatever, and that's one, but I think it's every first. Every first is my favorite. Hold on, hold on. Back up for a moment. Um, are you and Mike competitive with one another? No, not at all. Person. No, no. It's just that I... I'm competitive, and I was pissed that he beat me. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not competitive with each other. You're just competitive with him. <laughs> Does he know that you're competitive with him? He knew because he knew I was pissed. But it wasn't his fault. I knew I could beat him. I mean, he went to the bathroom an hour ago. I know. We haven't He's seen him since. sleeping on the couch oh, out there. <laughs> he doesn't seem to care that much. He's he cares. He, do, he does a lot of this right, for me. So wait, we're talking about our favorite race? Yeah. You know, I had already talked about the bear, but I actually, my favorite race was one that I wasn't running. I was um, It's got to be a race you're running. you got to be running. Okay, let me just share my story here. (laughs) So um, I was running, but I was running as a pacer, and it was um, the Superior 100, and I was pacing a couple friends, um, and it was, it was just such a cool experience to see with a clear eye what people go through. Now, can in you the explain Pacer half. just a little bit for people? Sure, that sure. Not mer- so ultra? in a lot of these long ultras, um, the runners are able to have someone pacing them for a certain portion of the race. So are you like trying to make them go fast enough? Well, you just want to be there as a support, keep them company at night, um, possibly you know keep them motivated so that they don't DNF. Um, and in this particular case, um, both of these guys had great history of many many races but um you know they they needed someone to be pushing them a little bit and helping them out and taking care of them and one of the guys uh tony he had tried running this race four times this was his fifth attempt at the superior 100 and it was just such an amazing feeling to get him across the finish line. Yeah, that was a big deal to get him. I, that was the only time I ever cried at the end of a race, and it wasn't my race; it was their race. And there was just something about seeing him and um, his buddy Mike finish together that was just unbelievable. Now, his, bu- so his buddy Mike had his own struggles that day, didn't he? Mike had a lot of struggles, and maybe someday <laughs> we'll we'll have him in here to talk so about that. Self-inflicted. <laughs> Struggles. He decided that it was a good day to, I don't know how to delicately put, shave his balls. <laughs> I think like four people are going to listen to the podcast. <laughs> Just razor burn? I think Chaffage. Yeah, he, he was in bad shape. As a big guy, Chaffage, I mean, Chaffage is really... Well, he also got really tired at one point and, and tried to take a nap. I mean, there were a lot of different issues you going on. You saw some on. tears out there, didn't you? I did. <laughs> I did. Grown men crying. Um, How does it make you feel when you watch a grown man cry? You know, he, we're talking about like a guy that's at least a foot taller than I am, much bigger. And, this is you know, a guy that if there was ever a bar fight, I'm standing immediately behind. <laughs> Well, you know, I just no, needed, to, yeah, that's, things, that's a great question. It. I mean, I needed to find out what he needed. And at the time, all we could come up with is he needs some Advil. I ran ahead on the trail. Did you think maybe someone. hug at some point? What? Hug. I think I patted him on the back. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm feeling really uncomfortable discussing this. I feel like maybe this is something that should stay on the trail. What happens because on the trail stays on the whole, trail? My whole point was that um, helping those guys and seeing – what people go through with a clear eye was really an awesome experience. I'd recommend, you know, pacing someone to anybody out there. It, it's it's just a really cool feeling, um, especially when you're able to help them make it to the finish line. Um, so that was my favorite, and I'm going to go back this year to run it myself. Corey, I, mean, I find it really awesome that your favorite is that it was helping somebody else. It makes yeah, me feel bad about yeah, all my cool. stories are sound like yeah, shit. You're, you're a selfish <laughs> asshole. <answer. Yeah. laughs> oh, I did this, and then I did that. <laughs> And I'm by glad the way, I'm going last. By the way, <laughs> I have paced one person, Scotty, and he, all he's done is made fun of the, by my inspirational words to him. I've now Aww. been used against me. No, you got that was inspirational when you got me to the finish okay. line. That was that was. He's a good pacer. He was, and, and, and it was funny because I had two pacers. I had one who, had, who didn't know the trail, and then I had Aaron who had just run the marathon, and um, she she was saying to me, "This is Karen." She said, "Oh, Scotty, you got you got." 
what it was it three hours to go seven miles this you got this in the bag and aaron's on the other side shaking his head he's like this is gonna be rough it's, it's gonna, gonna be, be tight it's gonna be tight <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be really yeah, that's tight what you want to hear right then right? i'm doing the maths and uh <laughs> And there's pavement ahead. I know we're going to hit pavement. And Scotty's like, where's the fucking pavement? I'm yeah. like, oh, we're almost there. I just wanted to get off that trail. I was, when are we going to get off this trail? Speaking oh. of doing the math, have you guys ever successfully done the math when you're late into a race? Yeah. Like two every time I like replay them so many different times. Every and I can never, I never like, no, I can't do it. Or yes, I can do it. So I was like, eh, I don't know. I guess I'll just keep going. I don't know. Well, at case in point, we, we did a workout today on the Swallow Cliff Stairs. And everyone kept saying, what, what number are we on? What number am I well, on? They don't know. People had pebbles that yeah. they were putting up there. I was like, well, if I can't count to 10, but then you forget because you're counting the stairs and then you're counting how many yeah. times. The first time Alfredo went to the Swallow Cliff stairs, he picked up all the pebbles and started throwing them. <laughs> He's like, what is all these rocks up <laughs> We all kind of walked away. You know, like, mm. So what was your favorite race, Corey? Oh, I don't know. I think I was saying earlier, I don't really have a favorite race. Uh, I just sort of each one of them is a good experience. I guess the most recent race I did was Leadville of last year. And um, I rolled my ankle pretty seriously. Well, even before that happened at mile 38 on the way to the Twin Lakes the first time I was just walking down the hill and it just took forever. It's a really long descent. And I was like, eh, I'll just quit here today. It's not my day. And a buddy of mine passed me, and I was like, eh, I'm done, dude. He's like, oh, good luck, whatever. I get in the aid station, and it's like, right, I'm just stopping for today. And Jennifer Leslie was there, and then one of the aid station workers came up to me and was like, well, why don't you just see if you can get to the next aid station? And I was like, no, I'm done. I'm not. I was like, just today is not my day. So I sat down in a chair for a while, and like eight minutes later, I was like, yeah, maybe I can get to the next aid station. <laughs> And of course I did get to the next aid station and then I was on my way back down Hope Pass and really rolled my ankle badly at mile 52, I think. And at that point I already knew, I was like, all right, if I got through this before and I'm still going, like, I'm just going to keep going. And I kept going. Cool. So I think that was probably. How many times do you fall like a hundred mile race? Eh, a few times every time. Like 10? <laughs> five, to, five to 10. Is it more in the beginning or is it in the end? It, I or it doesn't matter. There's always something. Like in the beginning, you're overconfident. Later, yeah. you're tired. Like there's no. Scotty told me this when he started for doing those, and he's like, "You're gonna fall a lot." And I'm like, <laughs> "It's because you're old and you can't see." Like this is. But the one I've done the two races, and the one I fell like three times, and yeah. it it hurts. You're by yourself. You're running at full speed, and you bounce like. <laughs> I mean, you're out like Superman, and then you bounce. And there's nobody around, and it just if you, you, you feel like you're a five year old kid that fell. <laughs> It's excruciating. That's why I hate it. Continue. Sorry. Do you, do you use handheld water bottles? Those are good. Uh, no. Do you have that? It's, it makes the falls a lot less worse because you can kind of hand on the water bottle. Or, or the more you fall, the, you learn the kind of tuck and roll technique. Yeah. yeah. If there's a place to tuck and roll, though. But that's a that's Usually that's a huge walks. difference between run you know running on the road and running on the trail. That's like a major difference. It's just yeah. I mean, I guess you wouldn't. You even never really fall on the road. I, I think I've fallen one time in, my, in like 15 years running on the road. Thanks for breaking that down for us. Yeah. Big difference. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. So now we're on the final final segment, final mile. This is mile 10. Um, this is the kind of the wrap up, and uh, I mean, I hope that people got something out of it. I hope people enjoyed it in some way. Um, we're going to do more of these with more people and uh, we have some other interviews lined up and some more ideas but I think that from for, for this last segment what I want to kind of talk about is w what are our plans this year what's next what you know what is the next six months what are we working on what's our training plan things like that now for me um, I, I have uh, this three days of Silomo race coming up in uh, Arkansas. Where Cat's doing that too, by the way. Cat Katarina's going to be there too. Yeah, fifty k, fifty mile, twenty uh, k, three days in a row, and then uh, that's part of like a big training block leading up to the Potawatomi Trail One Hundred, followed by the Indiana Trail One Hundred two weeks later. So I have. You're doing all that. <laughs> I have my work cut out for me in the next six weeks, and hopefully I can be successful. Damn. But. So like right now, the name of the game is try and get as many miles in as I can, try and you know eat right, move forward, try and uh, get this done. And but the the big picture for me for this year is the Angeles Crest 100, which I couldn't go to last year because of an injury. And that's that's the one race. Like if you said, what do you want to do this year? The one thing I want to do is I want to finish that race, get that buckle. Katarina's going to come and pace me. 
that's that's the big that's the the whole enchilada for me this year. So do you look at these other races sort of as training runs leading up to Angelis Crest, or are they do they all stand alone as important? Um, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry <laughs> for the pause, but Aaron has a creature in his stomach. Um, do you look at these as training runs? I don't. Do th- I don't think. I don't know what that means with the training run. You know, I think it. I think I'm running these races, and I think running these races is part of the whole process. I, of, I, I'm not a big know, fan of the training run talk. I, I feel like a lot of times the races, everyone just gets, like you'll see people who are downplaying the current race that you're doing. Oh, I'm training for uh, this run around the moon we're doing. Or something. Right. It's just like, come on, like why can't you just have a good time at this race? Right. So if I go to Potawatomi and I just suck, and it takes me like 40 hours to finish. Then my cop out is well, it was a training run for Angelis Chris. No, I'm gonna try and do a good job. I'm gonna try and finish. I'm gonna try and finish within the cutoff, and and it's not a training run. It's just it's a race that I'm that I'm using as part of this whole year's worth of scheduling. Um, but no. so maybe the only difference is that like you won't necessarily taper for these um, these races that are coming up. I don't have a taper versus for, anything. for Angelis, you'll maybe think more about. A taper. This guy doesn't taper for anything. No, I don't really taper. But but I think that I think the only the only difference is, um, mentally and um, I think the the approach to the race is going to be very different. You're going to see a very nervous, excited, anxious Scotty at Angelis Crest, whereas at Potawatomi, I'm looking forward to spending some time on the trails with my friends and the family reunion aspect. And yeah. the exp- it's more about the experience than it is about the accomplishment. Yes. I want to get the belt, belt buckle at the end. Yes. I want to you know finish within the time zone, but you know, it's more about the experience than anything else. Whereas AC I'm taking a very different approach. So Corey, tell us about what your, what does your year look like? What's next for you? Uh, let's see. I only have a few races lined up for this year, trying to reduce Very my, unusual. My, my, D- <laughs> my DNS to, uh, to finish ratio. Uh, Quad Rock 50 in Colorado is coming up in May. Is that 50 mile or 50K? 50 mile. And then I have the Bear at the end of September, Bear 100. After all you guys went out there last year and I saw the pictures and heard the stories, I decided I want to do that. I'll be out there with you. And then as a training run for the Bear, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a Colorado 200. In, uh, in July, <laughs> you just did. You just did five minutes of material about how training runs things bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> now you're doing right, so, uh, the yeah. real it's thing. It's a 200 I'm mile training. And it's on tape. Yeah. <laughs> we, 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 you, we literally have that on tape. <laughs> and maybe maybe he's having some of the the brownies this afternoon. Why? <laughs> why? Hold on a second. Why did you decide to bump up the distance um, to double it and go for 200 miles? I don't know why. And I was just joking about the training run thing like I, I, oh, now that, the, colorado, the colorado 200 is my main thing that i'm focusing on this year oh awesome um i don't uh, i feel like when tahoe 200 came out last year i don't know what it was but it's just something about that just really captivated me and i didn't feel like i was ready to do that as a runner yet and i feel like i am now what are you, you doing, you what are you doing differently the, the 200 distance okay. I, I don't know i i think it was after Last year when I did Leadville, I did it by myself. I didn't have a crew or pacers. I didn't really put any extra effort into it. I didn't have a Leadville-specific training plan. I just was kind of like, okay, I know this course. Like, I'm just going to go do it. And it just, like, worked out. And I was like, all right, if I can just go do that race and it's just something that I'm used to doing, like, I can probably try a 200 now. So I think that if I had gone through that before, I probably would have signed up for a Tahoe 200 the first time. And I like Colorado, and so I... Have you thought in your mind what, what you're going to be thinking in mile 125? <laughs> I have no idea. That's, that's what, kind of stuff that, that I think about. That is what I like. Keeps me up. That, that's what gets me excited about it. It's just like, what is mile 180 like? Or what's mile 150 like? Now, are you like, accepting applications for pacers and crew right now? I think I'm going to do it solo. Nice. It's a training run. It's, Scumbag. it's a training I mean, <laughs> you got to be ready to go do all Bear 100 with no crew or pacers. So. Racine? Me? Okay. Um, I am going to try my first hand at pacing at uh, Potawatomi, and I'm more nervous about that than I'm doing my first 100-miler in September. So I just want to be able to pace somebody well so that I can do it again because I think I like doing that kind of thing. I like helping people reach the goal like Kat, you were saying. It's like... It means more when you see somebody, you help somebody get to that point. But I want to do my first 100 miler and. Which 100 miler is that? Handy pen. Cool. So I want to get That's that done. That's in Western Illinois. Yeah. So point to point. So. Your husband going to run it with you? 
Um, no, he's going to crew. So you've already beat him. It's nice. I've already beat him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Flatlander's going to have an eight station mouse right, 16 right. with a bottle of Jack Daniels for you. Jack Daniels, because you were talking about uh, Jagger bombs, and I just want Jack. Well, so. we're going to have a DJ booth. Corey's yeah, going to go yeah. 30 hour and I DJ. I want the music that you we're, have. We're going to have the pole dancing. Uh, yeah, and I want the music that you, the girl. Yep, the, we got it. When, when, you, when we see you coming, we'll get the Neil Diamond cranking. Neil Diamond. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. exactly. Just money talks. And I will hallucinate that you are him. <laughs> so I'll <laughs> ask for your autograph. Because about then, no, I hallucinate. Now no, I'm worried about being sexually miners. abused yeah. on the Hennepin so, Trail. <laughs> I'm just uh, waiting to see what I do on this one. So anyway, that's nice. awesome. First 100, though. Aaron. Oh, sorry. I'm still thinking about her doing her, doing her first 100. Uh, I'm running a half marathon next Saturday. You guys are very excited about that with your 100 mile races and shit. That's nice. Uh, but that's a training run. <laughs> For uh, Boston, which is in April. Are you going to buy another jacket? Of course. Every year? Every year I buy a jacket, and then I buy everybody that comes with me a mug. Oh, that's it's a nice. Boston Marathon mug. I got, a, I got a mug, but I didn't go. Yeah. Well, wow. Like a special mug. Yeah. What's your goal this year for the Boston Marathon, since you've done it a few times? Uh, are every you... year I've done really shitty at it. And by that, I mean... Like Way three, faster than I could like go. Way faster than anybody in this room has <laughs> yeah. ever even dreamed of running. But like I can't even I can't even qualify for Boston at Boston. Like I'm not. Now, did you have the same issue as I did when I ran Boston? It was like I hit mile 15 and I was already getting cramps it's exactly in my legs. Right it's from that downhill it's running. All the first 15 miles is downhill and it rips up your quads. So like yeah. how many yeah. hundreds of feet of descent is there in the first it's, 15 it's, miles? It's not that it's, much. It's not, but you're running faster. But you're doing your you know uh, yeah. fastest marathon pace and it feels like you ran. A 5K at your fastest pace four times, and your legs are just – I mean, they're, like, wobbly. I mean, I'm – two years in a row, I'm 22 minutes slower or something for the Boston Marathon than I am in Chicago. Are you going to try training downhill more I'm going to Colorado in two weeks for, like, four weeks, and my aunt bought a house in Boulder, and I'm going <laughs> to run in mountains and four weeks. <laughs> that'll, be, that'll be interesting to see if it makes a difference. Um, uh, I'll be curious. To Other thing is this last year I haven't been able to run as much because of my hips. I, I, that's why I was curious about how far you guys run. So I, so I used to run like 100 miles a week for like a year and now I do like 50 miles a week but I also do it's really kind of dumb. It's spinning. I think my like my VO2 max and stuff is higher but but my legs are weaker. So, so, you're, uh, so your big focus of the year is Boston. For right now, yeah, and then we'll see what happens next. What do you What do you think? maybe beyond that, if you do then it's just then I guess I'll probably do. Sh I'm Chicago. I always do, but man, I'm always trying to break 250. I don't think that's possible. But I wouldn't mind doing this uh, thing in uh, Tahoe, where you do three three three, three marathons in three Tahoe days. Tahoe triple. Yeah, just because it's they're all road marathons, but they're up and down a hill. Well, it's got to yeah. be pretty. It's super pretty. Yeah, I mean. I don't know if you guys do this, but this is something that's only happened to me in the last four years since I've kind of gotten a little bit faster. I look for races that are small that I can maybe win. That's, like uh, my, that's kind of my goal. That. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking for 100 where there's it's like two people. It's because it's fun. It's my mom and you know, somebody down the block. So I don't know about this Tahoe one, if you, if you can even – I don't know how fast people are. They're probably super fast. But, yeah. Yeah. So you, you would like to win a marathon? That'd be fun, yeah. I, I ran the Kansas City Marathon last year, like a week after Chicago. I couldn't win it. There's like a group of like kind of mediocre Kenyan guys that go around from like small town to small town oh, yeah. and win like 500,000 bucks a, like a week. I would think that there's always going to be either they like, make like 30 grand a year, like the mediocre Kenyan or the high school kid. That's yeah. Gonna beat. One yeah. or the other. High schools aren't that fast. No. no. But yeah. But yeah, maybe if I go up to like Wisconsin, we maybe can win a race there, right? Or like Mississippi. <laughs> you have to find like a, whatever the heaviest state is. In the Union. I think it's Missouri. Could be. <laughs> <laughs> City was good, but yeah, that's it. I don't have any. Like, this not very interesting gold. But my hips being bad is a problem, so it's hard to do a lot of races. What about cat? Um, I guess my biggest goal race would be the Superior 100 in September. Um, I think it's a lottery this year. Hopefully, I'll get in. Um, but leading up to that, I'm doing Silimo three day with Scott and uh, like ten other friends. Um, and then I'm doing the Indiana 100 at the end of April. And I'm also signed up for Black Hills 100 in um, South Dakota in June. So I'm confused. If, if your favorite race ever or your favorite running experience was pacing at the Superior <laughs> 100. Mm -hmm. So why isn't your, your biggest goal this year to get me to the finish line at the Angeles Crest 100? Because you're a dickhead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm being set up here. Um <laughs> That is definitely a huge goal, and not just to get you to the finish line, but to really, um, you know, finish with a, with a good, a good effort. Um, 
I've got some tricks up my sleeve that I'm going to use when the going gets tough during that race. So I'm mu- I'm definitely looking forward to that. But we have tricks up your sleeve. Can you give us <laughs> one? Like a secret? And they're Go, all secret because, the because I don't want his competitors to know. Is, is it related to Neil Diamond or Jack Daniels? Probably, <laughs> no. It's probably, it's probably she's, probably, she's like caffeine. <laughs> I'm immune to it. All right. Well, I think that kind of wraps up what we're what we're going to be doing, and uh, you know next. Next episode, we're going to try and put it together. I think that in the interim, if you want to contact us, we have a Facebook page, 10 Junk Miles. Uh, come on come on the page, make some comments, critical, doesn't matter, good or bad. We want to, we want to put together a product that, that you're happy with. Give us some more things that you'd like us to talk about or some people that you'd like us to have interviewed. We're also on Twitter at 10 Junk Miles, and I think that the email address is 10 Junk Miles at gmail.com. Yep. I should um, mention that for every segment. I'm sorry? Probably should have mentioned the email or the Twitter every segment, yeah. Oh, yeah, every segment. Um, and that's about but, it. Yeah. So thanks for coming. Thanks for listening. And uh, I'll get my digestive problems figured out. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully the, the next... entire time we've been recording, his <laughs> stomach has been growling. Nothing smells, though, yeah? We're good. Well, I think I mean, you got to keep in mind, Aaron ran here, and then he ate some pizza and drank some beer. Yeah. Uh, and now you got to run back. I'm thinking about running back. I thought you're going to have to run back home. That's it.